you glorious gamers out there. Welcome to the Players 2 podcast, the video game podcast for gamers like you, by gamers like you. You can find Players 2 on all the social media, that's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, the lot. You can also find our written content over at players2.com, that's P-L-A-Y-E-R-S-T double dot com. And if you could take five seconds to give us five stars over on Apple Podcasts, that really, really helps us out. It does a huge amount for the exposure of the show. And thank you so much to anyone that's already done that for us. You're an absolute legend to us. All right, and on with the show. My name is Mark Henderson. With me, as always, Mr. Lewis Camley. Happy New Year, Lewis. Thanks very much, Mark. Happy New Year to you too and to all of our listeners. Yes, despite the fact that for me and Lewis, it is December the 16th. <laughs> it is but moments after the last podcast we recorded. So to us, this is an episode out of time. As we said at the end of the last podcast, we are taking a little break over Christmas. Next week, it will be back to normal. We'll be discussing all the games that we played over Christmas. Back to news, topic of the week, shout outs, all that good stuff. But for now, we'll just kind of doing a wee bit of a shorter episode i think although the <laughs> we've said that before yeah, we've, said, we've said that before and it's not been <laughs> so we'll see how good my editing skills are but for now i think we're just going to have a we look forward to 2020 and basically what we're looking forward to and yeah Lewis. What are you looking forward to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to kind of run through some of the big games that we are excited to be playing and yeah, just have a bit of a chat about gaming in 2020 generally. I've got to say the, f- the first thing for me really is actually just revisiting some of the stuff from last year or from 2019 that just still is on my to-do list, still really want to get to. Obviously in the last episode that listeners will have heard, we spoke a hell of a lot about Disco Elysium because it absolutely swept up at the Game Awards. Hopefully between that <laughs> that point and you hearing this now a console release has been announced for yeah. or a date for a console release has been somehow announced somehow I doubt that <laughs> yeah. Honest, but yeah. We, we can live in hope so uh, you might be sitting there already playing it that is definitely one of the games that I'm very excited to go back to and as you set me a challenge for losing the game awards handily lost prediction handily lost <laughs> so the, the one game he's beaten me at in about nine months oh, uh, <laughs> um, absolute rubbish so I, I will have to be playing uh, Hollow Knight but, but I have no issues with having to play Hollow Knight in 2020 I'm very much looking forward to that um, have you got anything else before we move on to proper 2020 games that you have still to sort of clean up from last year well there's a game that I want to clean up but it's from a long ago <laughs> long in the distant past list not just last year and that is the first last of us which well, of course yeah is we were talking about gaming uh, dark spots and I was mentioning that Bioshock was one, but this is definitely the top of the list in games that I've missed and it is a game that I will have to play, will have to play before The Last of Us Part 2, which of course is one of the games that I'm most looking forward to next year because it looks absolutely incredible, <laughs> but I have to go back and play this first one and that will be getting done over Christmas. So. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time you are hearing my beautiful voice, hopefully I will actually finish that game. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you're actually going to play it over the kind of Christmas break then? That That's is the, plan, the plan, yeah. yeah. If I can't quite manage it over the Christmas break very early in the new yeah. year, is, that is the genuine plan. It's good. I, I'm because still- as we're about to discuss... Years about to get it's real busy, real stacked. quick. <laughs> I'm really glad, just as, as you say that, that January actually isn't massively stacked because I've also still got Outer Worlds and Star Wars to finish from the tail end of last year as well. So I've got a busy couple of gaming weeks ahead, or hopefully, as you're hearing this behind me, and I can come forth and talk about them coming up. But tell me, okay, what what are you looking forward to in 2020? What's dropping in 2020 that you are excited to play? Sticking with Hollow Knight, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you think it's coming? Silk you think Silk Song. Song's coming? Yeah. Well, it was initially supposed to be coming out at the end of this year but then it got delayed Mm -hmm. because of crunch effectively and they were unwilling to do that which is which is a perfectly fine decision so i'm hoping is i going to be there in the first half of 2020 and i have such incredibly high expectations for it because of how much i loved the first game everything that i've seen from it playing as hornet this time as opposed to the knight in the first game just looks so more fluid looks so much quicker i cannot wait for that game that and final fantasy 7 remake which i'm sure we'll come on to is definitely the two games that I'm most looking forward to next year. And that is ahead of things like Cyberpunk, which I'm also very much looking forward to, <laughs> and The Last of Us Part 2, which I've already mentioned that I'm looking forward to. Silk Song for me is really could really be something special, yeah. because for me, Hollow Knight really was something special and has definitely been elevated to one of my favourite games of all time. Not, not just the last generation, like, ever. It is so incredibly good i have complete faith in that studio team cherry who are Australian, i believe they've no reason to doubt them and i cannot cannot wait to play that game good stuff i mean one of the really interesting things about the delays is that it seems to be that they just keep adding things to it as well like it's well initially it's the game started out yeah. as an expansion yeah. for the first game 
but subsequently spiralled and then they made what was probably quite a good decision to say no hold on a minute yeah. this is actually a full other game here totally. you know so yeah what about you well I mean the, the first one in the year um, I'm not I don't think we should necessarily do this kind of chronologically but I just uh, a big shout out to Dreams which is coming on February 14th wow, wow, I, wow. I don't know I'll hold my hands up as I say this I don't know if I will actually play it or play it in the way that it's designed to be played in terms of using all the creation tools to their fullest I just think that Dreams often the way that we talk about indie games I want to just get behind Dreams because it's such a radically different proposal within the gaming space and it is empowering players to really create things not in the way that something like Little Big Planet promised that we could create things which was you know good and, and had its kind of yeah, moments yeah, yeah, or, or uh, the Mario Maker games and stuff this is from everything that they've shown us and what we've seen and heard and like the bits that have come out from the early access content creation, this could just be completely, completely wild and there could be so many interesting ideas. We could see the birth of so many game developer careers just within that game. You know, some of the stuff that we've seen come out of it already, you're looking at games that are going to be challenging, are going to be weird, got really interesting art styles and you just think, well, that guy and this person and this woman are going to make the next generation of fantastic indies because they're going to know how to make games. They're going to be collaborating with people. I just... As I say, I might never actually turn it on and sit and make my own game, but the idea of diving into some of those games, I think, is so fascinating. And I just, it's, like we've said before, it's one of those games that I just, I want to cup it in my hands and like help it reach its potential in the world. So I think it could be so stunning. It could also be a massive, massive, terrible flop, and it could cost Sony quite a lot of money for having backed I, it for so long. But I really struggle to see any way that it isn't. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I don't see how that game can take off in such a way that would provide the future that you're describing there now i'm not saying that it is not capable of that i think it's very capable of all those things that you described but i i'm just not sure i think it's uh, it's almost like the release how they package and put that game out and the marketing around it and stuff almost has to be as inventive as the game itself is i still think the best thing to do would be make it free to play but make the tools not free that would be a, the thing that you spend money on but so that you and I could dive in and play some of these games get oh, the exposure but share if you that around to create the games then you may yeah for, or there might be wow. tiers you know maybe you can play five games a month you for know, free that but, is not a like, bad idea but it's coming out in basically two months and they haven't said anything like that yet and that worries me like I think we should start to see how this is all going to work soon or else I think you're right it is going to just be released as a typical game and it'll flop hard yeah Right, I think we should address the the big games coming. Yeah. Right, okay. I think we should address Final Fantasy VII Remake, Cyberpunk 2077, and The Last of Us. The, yeah, the triumvirate. I mean, those are the three massive games, that, particularly ones that have dates attached to them. Going through it quickly, Final Fantasy VII is still a new quantity to me. Once again, I'm hoping that by the time people are actually listening to this, I will have begun playing the original game on my Switch, which oh, I God, have yes. have bought and I'm God, excited yes. to. I've been telling myself for weeks and weeks now it's going to be my winter break game, oh, or God, one yes. of them at least. And I've got a fair bit of travel coming up, so I can actually sit on a very long train to Wales and play that. You're one of the only people <laughs> I know that's excited to travel. You know that? <laughs> yeah, well, it's because of the beauty of the Nintendo Switch. But everything we've seen from FF7 Remake, I am very, very excited. And it's literally because of how good that game looks that has made me think I want to go and play the original because I want to know what the difference is between those two things. Moving on to Cyberpunk. What do you say about Cyberpunk? I mean, it just looks like it could be utterly game-changing. Pardon the terrible pun, but... Never pardon that pun. It's my favourite pun. (laughs) Yeah, it's your favourite pun. That's why I'm asking for clemency. You've said quite a lot about trusting the studios implicitly, and I absolutely trust CD Projekt Red. I think The Witcher 3 is an absolutely astonishing game, a really brilliant, brilliant action RPG. If this can get anywhere near that, and I think it's going to, then we could be onto something really do, spectacular. Do you know what the thing is? To me, this is very similar to the sort of Elder Scrolls series and Fallout from Bethesda. You get your kind of high fantasy stuff over here with your Elder Scrolls. Then over in the Fallout direction, you get your sort of, not not cyberpunky, but more sci-fi worlds. Which is why, for me, I never really particularly got into The Witcher. never really had any strong desire to play it. Although everyone always says, of course, it's a fantastic game. And I don't doubt that. There's just something about that aesthetic that is just inherently off-putting to me for for no for no real reason like i just much more gravitate towards kind of sci-fi settings yes. and i think for me the fact that this is going to be the new cd project red game an action rpg in the style mm. of Witcher 
in the skin of a highly technical future and Keanu Reeves is in it is going to be absolutely <laughs> tremendous like I cannot wait to see what that game is yeah I mean I, I like that analysis as well for, that for you it's like your first kind of way into a CD Projekt Red game uh, yeah because I, I think I'm, I mean I have played The Witcher yeah yeah but like, there is no doubt in my mind it is almost universally loved I'm sure I would like The Witcher yeah. if I sat down to play it if I had the time but just initially when it was first coming out, I was just kind of like, uh, not so sure about this. Oh, I mean, it took me years to come around to it as well. Like, I never played it when it was first released, partly just because the thought of an 80-hour kind of action RPG always frightened me. But, <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm probably the opposite to you, where sci-fi worlds are a bit less appealing in some ways than kind of high fantasy, even though I'm not, like, massively into that either. Yeah, but you, you sort of, like, bounced off a lot of the Fallout stuff. Like, they couldn't totally. have post-apocalyptic yeah. stuff, you know? And then same, same much more cyberpunk, as yeah. would suggest. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I just think this. there's so much going on in this game. The simulation and involved in it it's it's going to be really interesting i don't think it, it so far in their marketing of it and their presentation of it they haven't really put a foot wrong so yeah that's i mean it's going to be the hot game of next year it's the one that almost every time it's been shown at a show it's won best of show awards so and then finally coming on to the last of us 2 i have played the first game i haven't beat it that's one of my shameful spots i just gave up on it after a while I, like i really liked the first one i just it was that way where I, I, I think it was the change of console generation more or less that caught up to me or i was like playing other things at the time but what we've seen of that so far is astounding naughty dog just know exactly what they're doing so i imagine almost everyone listening to this if they own a playstation is going to buy that game is desperate to play that game i mean yeah i, I mean i can't disagree with anything that you've said there to be totally honest with you I think uh, many of the points there probably reflect my own obviously Final Fantasy 7 is one the original was is one of my favourite games yep. ever it was my introduction to the, the JRPG scene and uh, turn based uh, combat in that way that I still love now it's, it's a very very important game to me in a lot of ways I probably wouldn't be sitting here doing this podcast if it wasn't for Final Fantasy 7 well, partly it was a big, big statement yeah. well, I mean I mean, of course there are many games that accumulate to yeah, that yeah. point but I mean it's definitely one of them mm-hmm. like without a shadow of a doubt um, I am really looking forward to Cyberpunk just because it is much more aesthetically down my road it, it's the only themes that I'm far more interested in than uh, The Witcher and similarly with Last of Us like it just looks like such an intriguing interesting story that has been told there by Naughty Dog again a studio that is just totally worthy of blind trust quite frankly <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited to play the first one to play the second game which is not a situation that I don't think I've ever found myself in before but yeah I, I cannot wait to play the first Last of Us over Christmas it's been sitting in my PlayStation like, bar <laughs> yeah. for months but just because I, I'm like I know I'm going to get to <laughs> I know I'm going to get and every time I see it I'm like I'm coming don't worry I'm coming <laughs> So I suppose after that, let's talk about a couple of games that I am somewhat sceptical about. Okay, yeah. And these two games are Marvel's The Avengers and Watch Dogs Legion. All right. How do you feel? Uh, sceptical also um, for for completely different reasons, and I imagine that's the same for you. I am not excited about this Avengers game at all. I'm really like quite cold to it already. Yeah. The the saying there's only one chance to make a first impression. Yeah. And it made our dog shit first impression. Yeah, it, it, it totally really did. Made <laughs> a really bad first impression. A big Hulk sized poo of an impression. <laughs> like yeah, it was not good the way they've shown that off. Everything that they've said about it since has really failed to grab me. I, I'm fairly into the Marvel stuff. I've watched like a lot of those most of those You're films. Way more into it than yeah, I am, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I because you mentioned it to me recently as like a game that you were kind of interested in for next year, and I was just kind of like, well, oh, it was, God. it's just one of those big titles. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's one that, of those standout titles yeah. like, early on in the year, you know? Yeah, and, and so because of that, you expect that it's going to be something, but yeah, I, it I think... It should be. It's got the might of Marvel behind it. This should be huge. And not like and bear in mind how good Marvel games have been with their kind of, particularly with the Spider-Man game on PS4 last year. That's, I mean, it's not studio exactly, but like that company knows what it's doing in terms, or it looks like it knew what it was doing in terms of telling Marvel stories in video games, picking the right developers, making the right types of games. And this Avengers game just does not look like it and i'm not sure that there's much they can do to salvage that really to change that reputation i i don't know either i think that they just have to double down on what they're doing hope that they get hope that what they're doing is good and let the game speak for itself to be honest um I'm not sure that all the trailers in the world are going to do anything for it. if anything i would quite like to see nothing until the game is about to go show off in a big way show that we've changed and made everything better everything feels better we've developed it even further and we're now looking great we're now looking good all these characters feel good and feel strong and feel the way that you would want them to feel in a video game if they can nail that and that is a big if then this game should be great it should at least be good yeah you know what i mean and but i'm quite worried that this could be like anthem when we were having conversations like this last year 
Anthem was always one. Anthem was always on the cards of like, yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to. Like that really anticipating oh, that. And then it came out and shot away all the place. <laughs> and then it was awful, unfortunately. It was really bad. It had an absolutely terrible launch, technical issues, boring gameplay, many, many, many problems. We don't need to go into all the problems of Anthem, but I can see this being unfortunately I can see this being like that. Yeah. I, I don't disagree at all. But what about Watch Dogs? Watch Dogs is a, a different proposition, I think. Like, from what they've promised us, I am very excited about that game, and I have not been anywhere near excited about the other Watch Dogs games at all. I've, I couldn't. Well, the first one was hyped up to high <laughs> hell. Then you actually played the first one, and you were like, oh, this is very average. Yeah, t- completely average. Did not live up to the systems and stuff that it was talking about whatsoever. That also dropped at the point where the kind of bloating of Ubisoft games was really at its apex, and I just had had enough and that really kind of set set that in stone this looks like they've tried something and if it works if they can get this like kind of fully simulated world where you can there's no clear protagonist and you can go around and recruit different people to your team and have these totally iterative experiences if that works my god what a phenomenal thing the game has already been delayed. The uh, game has already been delayed. And we have, certainly when it was first announced, was it at uh, E3 last year it was announced? Yes. E3? I think yes. it was. And we both kind of turned to each other afterwards and were like, amazing, but surely it can't actually do those things. They, they were promising a hell of a lot, and this series has promised a hell of a lot in the past, and I am extremely <laughs> sceptical about whether or not they're going to deliver that. Now, what I will say is that if they do deliver that, this game could be something really very special indeed, but I am nonetheless very, very sceptical about it. <laughs> well, I suppose the other one that I wanted to ask you about, also coming out the early doors next year, Resident Evil 3. We now know Resident Evil 3 is coming. Absolutely, yeah. Very, very excited about this. Um, as we've said before, like neither neither of us have really played Resident Evil 3. It's the only one I've not played at all. Yeah, it's like a, it's a bit of a blind spot. And I mean, the, the way they revealed that game was expertly done on oh, the tremendous. Sony so State, State of Play address so towards the tail end of December. And it, But the fact that they've not only remade Resident Evil 3 in the RE engine looks gorgeous, updated it, kind of modernised it. That's going to be superb. But they've also added Project Resistance as the kind of multiplayer mode. This, those two things together, that is such a great offer for gamers, like to have oh, essentially right. two games in one. I was already intrigued by Project Resistance, yeah. I had to say. And it's not something that I would usually gravitate towards, but it's something I would have been keen to try out anyway. But it would never have been anything I would have spent the money on buying. Yeah. But the fact that it is a mode in a game that I would definitely definitely buy this is great like i really think that's good i think that might do a lot for project resistance are we just calling it resistance or is it just called resident evil resistance i think they, they still referred to it as project resistance so i guess okay, until okay. we know more yeah it would, it would definitely be something i would be keen to give a try but the fact that that is the multiplayer to resident evil 3 as you said masterfully is, yes yeah. is the right word so another game that I know that you in particular have been very, very excited about, and that's not to say that I'm not also fairly excited about it, um, was supposed to be a 2018 game, and that was Doom Eternal, which has been pushed back to March 20th. Indeed, indeed it has. This is another game where Doom 2016 came out. Obviously, this is the sequel to that game, the kind of soft reboot of the franchise. Doom 2016 came out, and I thought, oh, that looks that looks pretty good. And then, of course, it got rave reviews. It was supposed to be an absolutely fantastic game. Everything that I've saw from Doom Eternal just looks so crazy and fun and exciting and frenetic. It, it just looks really, really exciting. And it's definitely something that I want to play. Again, I would really, really like to play Doom 2016 before I got to Doom Eternal. Whether or not I'm going to have time with that <laughs> is extremely debatable considering the amount of games that we've just talked about. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty high on my list. I mean, I know that FPSs are generally not your thing, but I mean, you must think it looks good. I mean, it, it really, really does look good. And you're you're bang on there. Like, f- uh, FPSs are just not something that I naturally gravitate to at all. However, the Wolfenstein reboot really did capture me. And I imagine the gunplay is going to be fairly similar there. Like, I would never go back to Doom 2016, I don't think. I've not got that level of excitement about it. But when we saw proper gameplay from this a few months back, particularly the total like rapidity of the movement and of the action, I mean, it was quite hard to watch, but in a, in a good way, you yeah. know, you're kind of watching it going, Jesus Christ, how am I ever going to do that? But a very, very exciting stuff from Bethesda there. If it can live up to the gunplay that I really enjoyed from the Wolfenstein uh, reboot, then fantastic. It's supposed to be better than that. Actually. I mean, yeah, I think it, pro- it should it's be. be. I mean, it's that. the iconic shooter of, Absolutely, of yeah. gaming, right? So, I don't know what they're uh, doing with old <laughs> FPSs. 
so then there's also just like a few other slightly smaller games. Obviously, we've talked about some of the massive, massive big hitters from next year. One or two that I am interested in that we have seen recently, one of which is Empire of Sin, the John Romero game, uh, which is due, out, I think, at the either the start or the kind of midway point of the year, quarter one, quarter two, I think it's due. We've seen bits and pieces of that. I still need to get really diving into it, but it looks like a sort of gritty, noirish crime mobster. Yeah, it looks, it's set in like prohibition era. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. America, yeah. Uh, and like a kind of tactical sort of isometric shooter kind of vibes. There's a lot going on. It seems like it also has a really like strong narrative that doesn't even necessarily look like this kind of same model as the gameplay. John Romero is a big, important part of gaming's history. And this Absolutely. this could be another like really interesting step forward. But just another indie game that just it's going to come out in that start of the year. We may not get to it right away, but I'm sure that months down the line, assuming as it, it turns out as good as it's looked so far, could be, you know, talking about in these kind of game of the year contender categories uh, that's a big statement i don't really want to like endorse that right now but uh, just one of those ones that really stuck out when i saw it last year certainly it certainly looks like it certainly stood out when you saw uh, trailers like it was e3 and was it was it one of the xbox things i think Sony? yeah oh, gamescom it was xbox Game, yeah, gamescom. Right, yeah. that was it and then also beyond that, uh, the, well, there was another one, I think it was from Gamescom as well, um, 12 Minutes, which was this really interesting, again, playing with time mechanics, which was a big feature of a lot of the announcements from last year. Yeah. Um, this was a kind of top-down story-driven thing about a couple who seemed to be, their whole life is about to get turned upside down by someone knocking at the door. We barely know anything about it. We just got this really, I thought, really, really stylish, interesting cinematic. Um, really sort of visceral as well yeah yeah it felt tense just watching it and you don't know very much about how the game is going to unfold so that's another one i'm particularly interested in what about you is there anything that isn't maybe one of the big standout games of the year but that you're interested in ori and the well of the wisps is one of the ones that stands out to me i think that every time that game is shown off it looks absolutely stunning totally beautiful and i would really love it if it came a switch on day one <laughs> uh unfortunately You're dreaming I, yeah <laughs> I, I think i definitely am dreaming there unfortunately it's coming to xbox so it's coming to xbox game pass as well so if you've got game pass definitely look out for that and you're it's a superb game and you'll probably be able to crack it out fairly quickly before the too many of the big uh, hitters come out <laughs> <laughs> but uh also coming to windows as well that's probably where i'm going to play it in reality but yeah it just looks stunning the first game i really really enjoyed a lot of aspects about the first game and i just think that with a, a wee bit more time and a wee bit more polish that game again could really be something very special indeed to me i i think that i went in there with a bit of an unfair attitude towards it like i think that i was wanting it to be the platforming of celeste and the metroidvania style of hollow knight and i just think that that's in my head those two games are just <laughs> yeah they, they, are, they, they to, to me they are stratospheric though mm-hmm. they are unbelievably good games and or it or wasn't quite like that but i tell you what man it's not a million miles away yeah it really is not a million miles away it's and with a, with a bit of polish it it could be i say about a polish I'm, I'm not saying that the other games were unpolished but i don't know like the, the main thing for me is that i felt that the control of your character was a bit loose in comparison to some of these other games like when you're asking for a precision platform and, and to traverse the screen in a very particular manner then to have very precise mechanics is is almost a necessity whereas i felt Ori was a bit more loose compared to say celeste which mm. was very very precise yeah super precise <laughs> um yeah so i, I mean it's, it's minor criticisms of a very very good game and i'm really really looking forward to that the other one that I'm looking forward to next year is the new Oddworld game list. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The new Oddworld game. So there's no guarantee that that is coming in 2020, but it's coming in 2020. I, I I'm mean, going to will it into existence. List. It feels like it sort of needs to drop soon. Like they've been dancing around this for a long time. We've seen some stuff from it now. Strangers of Wrath's coming out next yeah, year. Yeah, well. that's a good point. Yeah, like I think it's really early in the year that, and they might be using that as a way to just bring people into the franchise. Yeah, so this is a sort of a spiritual remake of the the early Oddworld games. Look at yeah. Yeah, it's it, Odyssey, it's Exodus. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like it's taking on the story from Exodus, but I think reinventing it fairly largely, like in the way that uh, Oddworld New and Tasty was pretty much just a upresed, like reskinned version of Abe's Odyssey. This is a take on Exodus that takes it in kind of new directions. So it just like it looks stunning from the wee bits that we've seen from it already. Yeah. That original game is just an absolute stone cold classic uh, well, of the for, genre for, for me and for you. Definitely, I mean, yeah. it's one of those games that I just remember 
when we were children yeah. coming around to your house and you just had this weird game where you played this <laughs> blue alien who, who farted and talked to other weird aliens and that was all cool for some reason yeah. and <laughs> totally addictive yeah. totally beautiful it was it was great it was it was a superb little puzzle game again it's one of these games that i would credit just why i love puzzle games at all it was just it was just a really creative really interesting game and i think that the new one just looks like that but times 10 it, it <laughs> looks it looks absolutely wild from what we've seen from it so far and yeah i'm really really looking forward to that in 2020 hopefully 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 yeah so moving beyond games then the other like the massive thing that is happening next year is that we're at last getting a major console uh, generation change and yep. um, so we'll still have our trusty nintendo switch that's going to go on eternally and will be <laughs> buried with us <laughs> um but oh, uh, do you know what i'm hoping for next year a pro version, um, yeah. A pro version of the Nintendo Switch that might be bigger than a PS5 for me. Do you, like, well, let's start there really quickly. Then, do you think that will happen? I think that we will get a pro version. Yes. Well, I do. I think that that will be next year. Not necessarily. No. Yeah. I would have thought that they might wait for the the new bigger consoles that you, the Xbox and the PlayStation, to come out and that to be a thing, and then maybe the summer of twenty twenty one. Yeah. Then you're talking about a pro switch because by that point the switch is then pretty old. Yeah. And those consoles will be absolutely destroying it. I mean, power wise, not that the Switch needs yeah. more of that. I mean, it's 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 gone in a totally different other direction from what the PlayStation and the Xbox have. But nonetheless, that gap, which is big now, mm-hmm. will be just colossal by that point. You're totally right there. And also, like we, what we have seen at the beginning of the Switch life cycle is so many ports of older games from the PS4 and from Xbox, and even before that, obviously, um, coming to the Switch. But that is going to be harder and harder to do as those consoles take off into the future. Oh, well, it, it, it simply won't be able to happen. Yeah. I mean, if, the, if you're designing a game for the Xbox Series X and the PS5, that game, realistically, if it's pushing the hardware yeah. of those two boxes, that cannot can't, function it simply cannot. on the Switch. It, it can't unless, unless it's stripped way, way back yeah. and the graphics look awful. And I would think that it would be near impossible for yeah. a true next gen game to run on the switch in its current state yeah without like you say massive massive compromise and i think as well what's important there is that these consoles there's a lot of talk about backwards compatibility and there's so much talk particularly on the xbox sides around services and so if you are now if you've got an xbox series x and on that you can pay a little bit of money for game pass and access the last decade of xbox games including a lot of third party stuff there's a lot less need then to get it on switch whereas at the moment you can make that decision of like it's still a bit of money on psn or on xbox uh you know unless you're on game pass already but it's coming to switch and that's slightly easier for me but when it comes down to it down the line you're already got these things yeah exactly i mean i feel that uh, as i was just discussing there with ori i feel that a lot of this generation has been oh when is this indie coming to switch Mm -hmm. you know what i mean whereas next generation i don't think that that's really going to be a thing like i think that a lot of these indies might not want to or might not i don't i'm not pretending to know too much about this on the development side but i I can imagine that it's less expensive to develop something that would work on the switch only than something that would work on Mm. the the next generation of consoles i I have to imagine that it must be more expensive to do that and even if you're not pushing those consoles in terms of power Mm -hmm. i can imagine that it would be more expensive to design for that more complicated more in-depth hardware whereas it might be just cheaper on the switch so i think that we might see a lot of indies start to focus solely on switch Mm -hmm. even if we get an updated version yeah because what's not going to happen legend of zelda breath of the wild is going to have to play on every single switch the zelda breath of the wild 2 is going to have to play on every single switch so although we're going to get a bump in power from the switch and although uh, games might start to look a wee bit better on this quotes the switch pro it, it will still be as we were talking about with the family quote of xboxes as well it'll be kind of death by the lowest common denominator which will be the switch Lite. so anything that runs on the switch pro also has to run on the switch Lite. it'll just be better yeah you know? so. yeah but that console is a fantasy mark we don't know if we are getting that at all we L- do not let's talk about what we do know which is that we are getting as you say the playstation 5 and the mouthful of the xbox series x <laughs> the xbox series x i mean xbox really i think uh, towards the end of this generation have been doing a lot of great things a lot of really Really, really damn good things what they are not doing is naming their consoles well they are I, I, I truly believe that they are naming convention is 
like it's infuriating to me there is no sense in it and i hate that mm. <laughs> however we have now seen their new box and unless anything spectacular has happened over the christmas break um <laughs> we still haven't seen the the ps5 but ultimately these will be very similar totally to the yeah they, these will be they, they are basically pcs yeah. at this stage and although xboxes looks more <laughs> like, like a pc tower than i would perhaps want mm-hmm. to be sitting under my tv in my living room i kind of hope playstation going a slightly different direction <laughs> but yeah i mean ultimately these are probably going to be very similar consoles yeah i think so yeah i mean it's, it seems like power wise from everything that we have heard so far they're almost identical in terms of the third party games obviously they're going to be running almost the same stuff constantly and so we've seen you know minor differences between performance on this generation i think generally speaking the xbox one x has edged the ps4 pro in every kind of category oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well the ps4 for pro came out first and then when the xbox one x came out it had to be the best it had exactly yeah, it had to be and they've they've focused so much over the years even from the beginning of xbox oh on yeah that, on, on power, power and performance and yeah totally that's absolutely xbox's mo 100 yeah and, and the xbox one x quite frankly is the most powerful console and it, the games look the best though, yeah you know what I mean? they do but what they don't have is the PlayStation exclusives. Yeah. And the PlayStation exclusives are, to me, they are just so unbelievably strong. Although Xbox might be cheaper, and I think that a lot of people might actually end up veering towards buying an Xbox next generation, because I really believe that the cheapest one just generally wins, mm-hmm. because as we were just saying, there's not a lot, a hell of a lot of difference between the two of these in terms of power. And if one costs 100 quid more than the other, then how, how do you justify that to yourself? Yeah. To the average gamer yeah. is what I'm saying. However, yeah. For me, Xbox still, despite their amazing services and what they're doing with services is so good. And that Xbox Games Pass is an incredible deal. Absolutely fantastic deal. But for me not to be able to play the Spider-Man 2 or God of War 2 or the new Horizon or Last of Us Part 3 whenever it comes out. Like e- e- even if Ghost of Tsushima turns out to be, to, to be rubbish, Sucker Punch is the next game. I don't know if we ever get a Bloodborne 2 the thought of not being able to play them is is unacceptable to yeah. me <laughs> so for me it's almost certainly going to be a playstation 5 again we are coming from a biased point of view as well we've been playstation boys our whole lives our first ever consoles that we ever properly owned were both playstation ones and then we've had every single one of them even through the dark ps3 years <laughs> we stuck by them i suppose my, my question to you is is that what would Xbox have to do? Like, what what does Xbox have to do for you to want one? Because th- right now they have Hellblade Two, mm-hmm. which although is a, an absolutely amazing game, and we have both said previously that that was one of our favorite games of the last generation, and it certainly was for me. And again, I, c- I can almost can't fathom the fact that I won't play that game. Mm-hmm. But the other flip side to that is that it's probably coming to PC at some point. I, th- I think, th- yeah, that's a really important caveat. That the difference there is that Xbox stuff generally is all coming to PC or will all come to PC at some point, less likely on PlayStation. No, it's starting to happen. We are seeing Death Stranding coming to PC in this year, 2020. Yeah, and also um, Godfall, the only PlayStation 5 game that has been announced as of this recording, mm-hmm. is also coming to uh, Epic Game Store. Exactly, so, so yeah. That will, that will also be on PC. So some of those barriers are coming down. I think, for me, what would make me get an Xbox, I think it, it does come down to games. It comes down to their exclusives, the studios that they start to buy up they're not as far behind as i like want to joke about sometimes for me not talking about the whole kind of industry and the sales and all that like you said they're like the systems and the services rather that xbox have been putting forward particularly towards the end of this generation particularly when they know that they've been beaten and that they are simply trying to regroup and build for the future we're starting to see some really interesting stuff and that is great and i will always think that xbox game pass is a great offer but there is not very much on it that i am desperate to play and there has been nothing released exclusively on xbox for a long time that i've been particularly desperate to play hellblade is one of those games for sure that is the kind of game that might tempt me but i think i could wait several years and get an xbox much cheaper or see if it gets ported to something else eventually if it's only that what i need to see from them are more ips more exclusive content more sequels to older you know we need to see another fable game say i guess as well because for uh, xbox they're two big major tentpole franchises 
Gears and Halo. There are multiple games deep now. I've never played any of them. I've never really been massively interested in playing any of them. I yeah. don't play first person shooters. Halo's good. I mean, I'm just, like, of course it is. Like, it's Halo, right? Yeah. And it's going <laughs> to launch this console and that's going to well, drive know, like, sales. I think a lot of people would say, like, Gears is really great as well, but I don't know. Like, I just never really got any Gears. Yeah. I like, mean, I think. Whereas Halo was, like, excellent. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, and because just recently they've brought out the Master Chief collection on PC, right? Of and, course, and it's yeah, just, yeah, it's yeah, gone absolutely. wild again. Everyone's yeah. playing and talking about yeah. it again. Um, but the thing is, is that I feel as if with Xbox, just just due to the nature of when Xbox were surging in that 360 generation, they were really fucking taking it to Sony effectively. Um, well, that was certainly the perceived the battle. Mm-hmm. Then it was the the rise of the FPS. It yep. was so incredibly dominant then, and therefore a lot of their IP was based in in that ecosystem. Whereas I feel as if this generation, almost, and I would credit a lot of it to the rise of the souls games honestly mm. and that actually i think a lot of gamers are moving away from fps even thinking of like battle royale games it's all third person and totally. again the rise of mobas mm-hmm. as well you know your league of legends your dotas as well even in that pc space and i i don't know like i feel as if there was such incredible oversaturation of first person shooters it felt as if every game that came out yeah somebody was shooting someone <laughs> do, do you know what i mean <laughs> and i just think that with like in a lot of ways it kind of moved beyond that i'm not, I'm not saying that 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 doesn't have credit or those games that aren't I mean some of those like I just said like Halo, Halo absolutely superb game superb franchise in general it had a couple of blips later on yeah. but I mean in, in that 360 era I mean it was untouchable you know what I mean I think the only thing that was even really close to it back then was Gears another Xbox franchise and Call of Duty do you know what I mean yeah. just third party I mean PlayStation had no answer to that totally but, I, but at the same time as much as that was their success then that is now what's holding them back now is that they uh, Xbox as in have bolstered that with more IP Mm -hmm. or more successful IP anyway and even other ones that were successful and great and were beloved and thinking of Fable as you just said I mean this is a whole the whole generation has been and gone and we've not we've not seen that and yep. there's, there must be fans out there screaming for that like whereas and imagine Fable 4 was an announcement at the Game Awards just past there they would have went ballistic yeah. for it you know and that's what like the next six that, months that's, for them that's have what to Xbox be that, need, is that, that they, just need, they just need the IP to compete mm-hmm. with PlayStation because right now it's on the IP front like Nintendo's head and shoulders like yep. Nintendo's like in a different in a whole different planet from everybody else but then it's PlayStation and then there is quite a significant drop to to where Xbox to, is to, to Xbox as for me anyway yeah oh, i think for everyone and that that is the thing like i, I think you made in passing there a really interesting comment like for the, your typical gamer your average gamer so to speak you know whatever that means exactly but for the general public going out to buy a console price is going to be the thing that matters and if they hear basically that xbox is more powerful so things look better and it's a hundred dollars cheaper or a hundred pounds cheaper or whatever and we don't know that with any certainty at all right no, now but as well that, that, that just won't happen this generation no <laughs> but like if you're if you're the type of gamer who mainly plays fifa or a couple of racing games or you you know you pick up destiny even but you're not playing the newest thing all the time you're not that bothered about it that price thing will be the difference but i I think for a lot of gamers and it feels to me this generation has changed things where gaming has become so stratospheric everyone is talking about video games i think the the interesting thing that playstation did was on their actual exclusive content they doubled down on single player games they know that people are going to pick up all the third party multiplayer online stuff but they really thought telling single player interesting really quite profound stories at times is the way that will keep people here and that is like what xbox has been missing it's just like a doubling down on innovation in that space and they just you see the things they released this year like crackdown and it's you know it's nonsense like they're not not good enough that i think is what the where the difference lies for what is i think becoming your average gamer but at the moment is maybe still a bit above that which is that people want those big exclusive single player interesting stories to sit alongside everything else that they're playing but they still want your god of war that's going to just knock you off your feet for a couple of weeks and you'll go back to destiny after that or whatever yeah the thing is is that it all boils down to the games Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. that's really what we're saying here it just boils down to the games and we know we're getting we know we're getting halo infinite on the Series X, we know that that's. I think that might. Is that, that is the, the launch title. Is think, that the yeah. only confirmed? It's what they said at the time. Yeah. But as cool as that might be, and I'm sure a lot of Xbox fans are going, "Yes, thank God, this this yeah. looks really, really great and really good." But again, to your average gamer and quotes average gamer, because yeah. I mean, what is that even? If if you see that and you see, oh, that that's really cool, we can get Halo on this kind of awkwardly shaped Xbox Series X or over here we can get the new Horizon the new God of War and the new Spider-Man on the PlayStation then to me I, I don't know how many people would choose Halo over that personally yeah I mean I don't know like maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm too close to this maybe I am too biased towards PlayStation 
But if I knew as a gamer and someone who was like relatively well informed about this that like all those titles were coming, Last of Us Part Three was coming at some point. The, the second Ghost of Tsushima is really good, <laughs> and we're getting and we're getting that as well. Do you know what I mean? Hideo Kojima's next game is going to be a console exclusive for X amount of years as well. Whether it's Death Stranding Two or something not equally batshit, do you know what <laughs> I mean? I don't know. As as someone who's Again, might might be too close to this, but as like someone who takes this quite seriously, I would say, mm. I don't know how you turn your nose up at that. It would have to be a significant, like it would have to be like a hundred dollar price difference for me to be like, actually, with the Game Pass over there, that is actually quite good. But I mean, just to, just thinking a wee bit into the future and what you could be getting on your PlayStation, yeah, I just don't know how you turn that away. And who do you trust to continue making new innovative IP? You know, at the moment, it's only Sony you can trust for that out of those two. You know? Well, I, I thought, I, I'm not taking anything away from Xbox because there's been a lot of change at the top of xbox and they've made a hell of a lot of the right moves recently and they're buying really interesting studios we've, we've just mentioned hellblade made by ninja theory who have just been bought by xbox obsidian who just made yep. their worlds which was my game of the year probably yeah we've now seen it we're getting hellblade 2 i'm so so excited to see whatever obsidian do next as well so i'm not saying that like xbox have the capability yeah. there i mean it's right there for them for the taking it's just can you execute on that totally do you want to talk about stadia for five seconds yeah let's do it quickly Okay, how do you feel about Stadia? <laughs> well, talking about executing things properly, that has been a terrible launch from Stadia at the tail end of 2019. I don't think it's the right thing for at this moment. I don't think they're... It sounds like the tech works. I just don't think that there's the whole package. Do, okay, so here, so here's the thing, right? We're talking about boxes versus boxes, mm. Xbox versus PlayStation, right? And we're talking about, oh, it's, it's the games that matter. It's the games that matter, it's the games that matter, right? See if Xbox starts to move away from selling us of those boxes, which which I think is a good move for Xbox, mm-hmm. by the way. And in actual fact, we are xCloud. Why would anyone, assuming that both the techs work and Microsoft and Google can make the, the streaming tech work equally well, I yeah. would believe, I don't have any reason to doubt that. Why would anyone choose to pay for Stadia as a service rather than pay for xCloud, even if you weren't getting Games Pass included, even if you weren't getting that included? Why would anyone choose that? I don't have an answer for that, Mark. I'm afraid, but I don't know why anyone would. At least Microsoft and Xbox are a trustable part of the gaming industry. They've been around for, you know, the best part of 20 years now in in the gaming space. Google are not massively trustworthy with any of their products. No, it could easily be in the bin yeah, like four it, years from it, now. It, it, f- four bloody weeks from now. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but, and, 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 and they did botch that launch and there is a lot of question marks over what it is that they're really trying to do with that. We all expected it to be this kind of Netflix of gaming type thing it's really it's, it's really far from that actually yeah. Game Again, Pass is much closer to that it's all about the games man yeah. it's all about the games yeah. what, what did they launch with they launched with a bunch of good but old games mm-hmm. like a bunch of old games and you're selling a founders edition here to the most hardcore of the hardcore they've played those games Yeah, they've played those games you need something new you need something amazing you know what I mean? You, you need your killer app, yeah. effectively, you know? Well, just and look at that. Like, the, the Xbox are launching... Of course they are. They're launching the Xbox Series X with Halo. And we, we know that PlayStation, it'll probably be Horizon or something to it'll, that It'll effect. be Horizon. It'll be the promise of Spider-Man 2. And yeah, Spider-Man 2. you know, and maybe like a Gran Turismo or something like that that just like, shows off the technical power of it. Mm. Stadia have come out with a bunch of old Tomb Raider games, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. It's a shame because I think that the streaming future is... I want to be careful with my words here. But I don't think it's as negative a thing as many people think that it is. But I just think that what Google have done so far has been poor Mm -hmm. to the extreme, quite frankly. And I just think that if Xbox wanted to, they could eat their dinner anytime they wanted with xCloud. I really do. I really think that if gamers want that service, then Xbox will go flick a switch and go, oh, you can get that over here. Mm -hmm. And Google will go, oh, but we're still here doing this thing. And everyone will go, right, and what? Yeah, and, I, <laughs> and I need this controller and I need this, you know, yeah. this Chromecast and, and all that kind of got, stuff. Yeah, exactly. I've already got an Xbox controller. Yeah. It feels much more like Xbox is just going to say, here's an app. It doesn't matter what kind of device you're using. You can yeah. put it on anything. Yeah, I really believe that that's probably the future is that in reality, after this generation of consoles, I really think that we might be moving to a future where there there isn't 
a next Xbox, there isn't a next PlayStation, there is the next uh, PlayStation app or the next Xbox app that you yeah. subscribe to. Ah, the sun will have burned out by then anyway. We don't need yeah, to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, global warming. No, <laughs> which actually, stream, there's a lot of research coming out just now that streaming is not good environmentally, which I don't know enough about to say anything about well, that right now. But Interestingly, like not getting too high on the, mm. on the old preachy uh, mm. environmentalist horse here, but apparently digital games actually are nowhere near as environmentally friendly as they seem, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, despite the fact that you have to burn discs and hand out plastic boxes. Yeah, and yeah. post them all over the world. Post yeah. them all over the, well, exa- well, exactly, yeah. and then post them all over the world. And for some reason, I don't, again, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it seems to be a bit up in the air about how... I think it's, I mean, just like uh, the absolute minimum of it, you look at Stadia and you go, there are enormous server farms that are doing this, that can be good, to, you know? And no, so, well, well, I mean, yeah. not, I mean, just think of keeping that cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, apart yeah. from anything else, just that alone, good lord. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to remind everyone that you can find Players of Doubt on all the social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, the lot. You can also find our written content over at playerstout.com. That's P-L-A-Y-E-R-S-T-O-O dot com. And if you could take five seconds to give us five stars over on Apple Podcasts, again, it really does mean a huge amount to us. There's a reason that every podcast in the world asks you to do this for them. It does a huge amount for the exposure of the show, and it really, really helps us out. So if you guys could do that for us, again, it really means a huge amount. It really does. The perfect start to a new decade. The perfect start to a new decade. There you go. Next week, it'll be business as usual, format as usual. <laughs> um, and we will be talking about our game of December, although it's a week late and we do apologize for that. We didn't plan this out terribly well, but it will be inside. We'll be talking about inside next week and I'm very, very excited to talk about it because although we were talking about all the games that we'll be playing over Christmas, that is definitely going to be one of them exactly. for me. Yeah. Definitely going to be yeah. one of them for me and I'm very excited to talk about it. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. See you later, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, yeah.